In this series, I'm exploring a new African wilderness and its inhabitants. Here in the central highlands of Namibia, a huge area of bush is home to a groundbreaking project. Back in 2007, Arindi's landowners took a huge gamble. After decades of cattle farming and hunting, they decided to return the land to the wild and brought in wildlife experts to realise their vision of a haven for animals funded by tourism. Elephants were one of the earliest species to be reintroduced here because they clear the bush and create the grasslands necessary for the other game animals. When there were only cattle here and a handful of antelope species, they were really good at keeping the grass down, but that allowed all these trees and shrubs to really overgrow. And that's why we need the elephants, because look what they do to these shrubs. Because they like the taste of the bark, they strip it off the trees and cause them to die away. And this means that you get greater areas of grassland, which is better for the grazers and better for the predators that feed upon them. So they're sort of using the elephants as landscape gardeners. At the moment, the reserve is home to just 14 elephants that live on its southern edge, close to park headquarters. There's a breeding herd of females and young calves. And four young bulls living in a bachelor herd. And that's where the trouble lies. Without older bulls to manage them, these youngsters are hard to control. And in a park like this, which also welcomes tourists, it's important that they tolerate humans. But Stompy, a bull elephant born with only one tusk, and his friend Tui are refusing to cooperate. The boys are unpredictable and often charge vehicles, so the park guides need to watch them closely. I'm actually quite looking forward to seeing Stompy. I know he's naughty and all that, but uh, he's a real character because of that. The fact that he's so demonstrative, he so wants to be the boss. But I'm also aware that if he continues in this vein, it's just going to make life difficult here for everybody, for him, for the staff here. So it's important that he does calm down and gets used to vehicles. Elephant tracker Rodney Hall is one of the team responsible for these notorious elephants. Stompy's around 20 years old and has reached sexual maturity, but he's still an adolescent in elephant years. Rodney must be careful he's not in must, a condition thought to be related to mating, where increased testosterone levels can make elephants extremely aggressive to ward off rival males. If Stompy is still in must, you see the trunk is going up, he's tasting the air. Right. So I can almost tell you for sure he's still in must. Okay. okay. What he's doing now, he's analysing. He's trying to get our direction mm -hmm. and he's smelling. I just want to get some eyes. Yes, do yeah. He's, yeah, yeah. he's waving his ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stompy is soon joined by the other young buck, Tui. Flare in his ears. Here he comes. Being so close to these bulls, we have to be alert to the slightest sign of danger. They're wily old creatures, aren't they? They know what they're doing. But while we're looking at Stompy, another young bull has crept up behind us. Suddenly, there's a standoff. OK, get into the vehicle. When a 10-foot-high, three-ton bull is squaring up to you, it's no joke, even when you're in a vehicle. Yeah, please be quiet, do not move. Okay. Just be very quiet.
Sometimes that side has to move inside, eh? Yeah. Okay, move inside. Inside. Ah. In the wild, a bull elephant will charge if it feels threatened. They've been known to kill rhinos, other elephants, and humans. Our safety depends on Rodney's expertise in reading these elephants' behavior. He's calling them all together. I'm gonna give a 50 meter space. Rodney knows these animals extremely well, and by moving back, he diffuses the tension. With us out of range, this cheeky bull turns his attention to Tui, the bull with two tusks. Tui is quite a young bull. Yeah, he's a little bit younger, yeah. The two adolescents start to play spar, a great preparation for future dominance battles. They're not aggressive, they're just testing each other's strength. I can see him. No, he's, re he's relaxed, he's, he's feeding. After a few minutes, the youngsters settle down and it's safe for us to leave. From now on, the bulls will receive daily visits from Rodney in an effort to habituate them to the vehicles and ensure the safety of the park's guides and visitors. Over the coming years, several hundred more elephants will be introduced to help landscape the reserve and support the grassland animals. One of the most important habitats in the reserve are its waterholes. There are eight in total, three of which are home to several hundred of Africa's most feared predators. Not far from the elephants, at the park's headquarters, five large crocodiles are in a holding pool awaiting relocation to one of the waterholes. There was a time when crocs like these were endangered in Namibia due to hunting and loss of habitat. But numbers are now on the rise, and these lucky individuals are about to be given a permanent new home. Game manager Ruin Klerter lets me join his release team. I think the, the most important thing is we must be careful not to slip into the water because it's quite steep. We must remember it is a wild animal and it will grab you if it gets the chance. Okay. As a vet, so. I deal with all sorts of animals and offered the opportunity to get hands-on with these two-metre crocs. I can't resist the challenge. The thing you've got to remember about crocs is you don't get tame ones. You cannot habituate these animals to being handled at all. So as soon as we start trying to do anything with these things, you'll get a sense of just how strong they are. There's no easy way to catch over 100 kilos of crocodile. As I approach, the crocs submerge themselves. I need to get the noose on the end of a long pole around the jaws of the first crocodile but the crocs are having none of it. Finally, the moment when I find out just how strong these crocs are. It's now a matter of brute force to haul it out. As we pull the croc from the water, it twists and rolls as if it were tearing the flesh from a prey animal. Using a metal bar to secure its powerful head and jaws, we begin to get it under control. These animals are so tough that this won't harm it at all. Even though it's only two meters long, it takes half a dozen men to subdue it. And we have to cover its eyes to calm it down. This insulation tech will be more than strong enough to keep his, his, uh, his mouth closed because although he has got incredibly strong muscles 
for closing his drawer. There's only two small muscles that open it and you can easily beat those with some tape. Okay? All right, you can tie the legs for us now. Just because he's gonna go into the back of the truck, we don't want him walking about, so by hobbling him like this, we can ensure that he goes nowhere. Okay? It all looks very stressful for them, but it's only for a short period of time. And where they're going out into one of the big dams is gonna be far better than the small crocodile pool they've been in. One down, four to go. This relocation is an important move. In its new home, this croc will play a vital role in keeping the natural balance between predator and prey. Surviving 60 or 70 years, there'll be no need to restock anytime soon, but the team will keep watch for signs of successful breeding. Here in Namibia, I've been given a unique opportunity to see firsthand what it takes to restore an African wilderness. And it's a chance to get close to some of the most amazing animals on Earth. But this is no wildlife safari. Some of the work here is very hands-on. Having captured five two-metre crocs from a holding pen, it's time to relocate them. All right. The waterhole that will be the crocs' new home is the largest on the reserve, located in the very heart of the park. We've brought a large team, as releasing these crocs is just as dangerous as catching them. It takes eight of us to lift this powerful creature, it's solid muscle, and at first, it catches me by surprise. Okay. Finally, I get it under control, and we carefully untie its jaws. One, two, three. Okay, big fella. Although it may look calm, the croc's growl tells me that it's extremely angry. But I can't resist taking the risk of getting a closer look. If you look into the back of his mouth, you can see that he's using muscles to actually close off his throat. And this is how they can actually attack prey underwater without actually inhaling or ingesting a huge amount of water. It's quite neat, isn't it? It doesn't quite look real. With five crocs to relocate, it's a long afternoon. Each one is a real challenge. OK, ready? Yes. All right, hold well them. If they can see what they're doing, they see where the threat's coming from, they will swing that head. And believe me, it's solid bone. Three, two, one, go. After a few hours, the final croc is released. He's a very instinctive animal, so if we want him to turn towards the water, he'll turn towards the threat. So the side that you touch him on, Come on, pup. that's it. So there we go. So now he's facing the water. We can relax and let him go now. There we go. With a little help to point it in the right direction, the croc heads towards its new home. These predators are a vital part of a complex food chain with a diet of fish, birds and small game animals. By releasing them here, 
the team are taking another small step towards restoring the natural balance in the reserve. That's great, that's a really good result. Hopefully they'll go off now and make lots of little croc babies. As darkness falls, the waterholes spring to life. Night is an incredible time to observe wildlife, because along with the resident crocs and the hippos, most of the park's other animals can be found at the water's edge. Elephants are nightly visitors. An adult will consume over a hundred litres of water after spending its day foraging for food. And as the elephants arrive with their young calves in tow, the hippos leave the water to graze on dry land. Because hippos have sensitive skin that burns in the sun, they must eat during the cool night, and they'll feast on more than 45 kilos of grass before returning at daybreak. With most of the park's game animals concentrated around the water, they're a magnet for predators like the big cats. Nocturnal hunters like lions take advantage of the darkness to stalk abundant prey species like oryx and springbok. But they don't have everything their own way. In the pitch dark, our night vision cameras capture a remarkable moment as an elephant sees off a couple of lions. Against this large adult, the two lions stand no chance. It's fantastic to witness this natural behavior a hopeful sign that these introduced species are settling in. But while the place doesn't sleep, tonight, neither do we. A wild croc has found its way into the camp, and my newfound croc catching skills are called on once again. There's a, um, a croc wandered out of the, um, the pool, and it's now knocking around the office, so. Not the best, really, for people walking around at night. Even a crop this size could cause someone serious damage. We need to catch it as soon as possible. Even though it's small, this croc's jaws are powerful and I need to keep my wits about me. So he can't come forward while I've got his tail, obviously. That's it. Let him roll, let him roll. With a helping hand from some of the park's guides, we get it under control. Let's tie his mouth. That's the only thing he's going to hurt us with. So let's just wrap that round him. Make sure his nostrils are clear. There we go. That's fine. Close to park headquarters, we release the rogue croc back into his waterhole and leave him to join the others on the right side of the fence. Somebody hang on to the end of that strap. Hopefully, it won't find its way back to camp again. Are you, I'm going to actually give him a bit of a shove as well, GP. OK, you all good there? Yes. Three, two, one. There we go. That's where he wants to be. Pest control. Always wanted to do it. Always. That's some rat. <sighs> It's been a really exciting first few days here in Namibia. Seeing the changes the team are trying to bring about and the problems they face. This is only the start, but what they're doing here will transform Irindi Reserve forever.